guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's something about sort of the gaming drag today. I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Dawn Chorus Runes Path. There's like two minutes of content left for Bjorn's Path, so I'm, I'm just going to wait until the next update for Bjorn comes out. Anyway, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. No, 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 no. Load. There we go. Yes. There we go. I never expected it. I never wanted it either, but I kept thinking about it, like a vinyl record skipping backwards. Same scenario repeating like a nightmare attacking when I was least expecting it. But now that we're together again, where's my anger? Four chord loop, same pattern repeating over and over. This is where I find my comfort. But for how long has it been on? When is the time to get up, lift the needle, and leave? What are you thinking about? Music. Miko. He seems so distant, eyes gazing outside, somewhere beyond the horizon. Have I ever known him? A person I used to call my closest friend. I thought I did, but I no longer know. Maybe everything I thought about him was off. All I can do is guess. Guess and ask, but he doesn't have to tell me the truth. All we ever do is guess. We build our models of others, who they are, how they might feel, and what they might be thinking. We change them all the time, sometimes shaping them closer to the person they represent. But sometimes our guesses are completely off. And still, they're just models. They're inside us, a part of us, apart from the outside world. How do I break the wall between us and touch the true Miko, when I can't even think of anything to talk to him about? Cold water drips from my body, cooled down and refreshed. Life has been so weird lately. Despite the move to another country, not much has happened since my finals. I spent most of the summer at home, enjoying it while it lasted. But my daily trips to the lake seem so distant now, as if they happened another life. Every hour of proper summer is, a value, is as valuable as gold in Finland. We don't have that many of them each year, but this past summer is something else. Sunny and pleasant from June to August. The only one like that I've seen. Perfect for being lazy. But now? I got here and it seems like more has already happened during this camp than since the start of the academic year. The need to listen to some music only grows. I need something I could link this moment to. Some kind of a sonic backdrop for this place. The music Rune showed me yesterday was nice. Did he tell me the name of the artist? I, I can't remember. I should probably get going, and I can listen to some music in my room. Miko went straight to his room after the shower, but I'd rather rest here a bit before having to put on clothes again. Sometimes I wish going bare fur was socially acceptable. Oh, hey Carvin! Hey, uh, finished with the swimming pool? Yeah, I got an awful cramp and had to leave. Oh, hell, while swimming? That's pretty dangerous. I had my fair share of cramps in the pool already. I know how to deal with them. Rested a bit? Yeah, I'm better. It's always nice to visit a sauna. With some luck, I'll make it to the evening without a nap, but I can't promise anything. A nap? What are you, 40? No, I'm sleepy. As much as I loved it, falling asleep with runes snuggled into me was challenging. As much as I loved it, falling asleep with Rune snuggle into me was challenging. He doesn't snore, thankfully, but I'm not used to sleeping with someone else, and finding a comfortable position took me a while. I, al I also had to lean back a bit and keep my hips away from Rune for obvious reasons. I don't want a very awkward morning. I have a ton of photos from the whole trip to go through and tweak, and that, that one's tedious. That's one tedious task. How's it work? Uh, what do you do with the photos? I check their framing, straighten them if needed, change the exposure, bring out the shadows, and tame the highlights. Or sometimes the opposite, tweak the colors and sometimes add my own to the shades. Quite a lot, it takes so much time. Do you know what the waiting time is for wedding photos? Up to nine months. And it's not because the photos just lie around and the photographers are too lazy to upload them. Developing photos takes a lot of time to do it right, and it changes so much. The door opened suddenly and I turned around to see who's entering. It's Travis, alone. Oh, hey guys! Are you dressing or undressing? Which would you prefer? I don't think I have a preference. But some company in the sauna would be nice if you're heading there. No, we're just leaving. Travis grins as if I told a great joke. Something funny? Oh, no, I'm just in a great mood. Travis whistles as he walks up to a locker, stashing a small bag inside. Something happen? Yes! The beaming Tanuki, who was obviously waiting for the question, jumps with excitement. I got accepted to a student exchange to Japan! Oh, congrat. Rune opens his snout wide in absolute bewilderment, the implication of Travis's words reaching him finally. Results! The results are already in? Fei-fun! Uh, my phone broke! I didn't get a notification! 
I gotta go. I have my laptop. I have a laptop in my room. And Carvin, you coming? Sure. Just let me put on my socks. I follow Rune down the corridor, barely able to keep up with his perky steps. A student exchange in Japan. How long did he say it was? A year? He's so excited for it. I should be happy for him. But I'm feeling such a heaviness inside instead. I don't want him to go, but I've seen how, how much he's excited for it, and I bet he'd have, be happy there. It's all beyond my control. I have no say in it. Why should I? I have to accept it, no matter how hard it feels. I just met him. We just got close, and now what? We have one month before he's leaving? I've been lamenting it once already, but only as an eventuality, and before we spend another night together, now it feels so close. As we reach the door to his room, I start saying goodbye to him in my mind already. Rune lets me in first and then closes the door behind us. I thought he'd go straight to the laptop, but instead he's pacing back and forth across the room. Something wrong? Oh, no, quite the contrary. This is a big moment. I'll tidy up a bit here first. He hesitates a bit before stepping up and pulling me into a hug. A close and gentle one, as if he was afraid of breaking me. It's a hug of happiness, sharing emotions that can't be shared with words. Snuggling back into him, my arms under his. I feel a bit of his happiness, too. I have to try to be happy for him. This is what he wants. So, with a smile on my snout, I snuggle him back closely. If he's happy, then I'm happy, too. Hmm, what music should I play? I don't know what would go well with opening emails, so I'll take my latest songs. I'll take my last played songs. They should do. I hope you liked her. Yeah. Oh, and I wanted to ask about the name of that trip. Oh, and I'll make us some tea. I have something special for the occasion. And he walks away to turn on the kettle. Didn't you want to see the email? Yeah, I can't wait for it, but I can't just casually open my laptop and check messages. I have to prepare myself for it. There are only three slots. It's not a very popular program, and I can't think of many students with grades good enough to get accepted. I had no idea Travis was doing any sort of scientific work. I mean, this is a science camp after all, but still, my opinion of him went up by a mile. It'd be nice to go with him. He seems like a nice guy. It could have been much worse. I see. What kind of tea are you making? Something even more special than the ones in the tea house? They already were so fancy. I have my Shinsha Caboose with me. It's the freshest, earliest kind of green tea. It's shaded for at least ten days before harvesting. A bit like Yokoro, but this is even more intense. It'd be crazy cool to get fresh Shinsha in Japan in April of the next year. Just imagine. I wonder if I could try to source it directly from the manufacturers. Maybe they have their own shops. So, do you already know what you'll be doing there? Studying foremost. It's two semesters plus an internship during the summer. But I have so many other plans, too. I want to climb Mount Fuji, ride a bullet train, and I can't wait to start having Natto for breakfast. I think the water is ready. 60C is plenty enough for this tea. And Rune walks away to prepare the tea, his stubby tuft standing upright in very obvious excitement. Maybe he'd let me visit him during the summer. The flights are so expensive, but I'd get to visit Japan and get to see him again. An intense smell of tea fills the room, but it's quite unlike any tea I've drank before. I don't even know what it makes me, what it makes me think of. Bean cooking water? Broccoli? Oh, this is funky. This tea goes hard. Rune puts down a teapot and two cups on the desk, then pours the tea into both, yellowish green and barely steaming. Okay, I think I'm ready. I nod and sit down at the front desk on the other chair next to Rune. An internal conflict rages inside me. Half of me wants Rune to succeed and be happy. The other prays to any gods that somehow he'd be rejected and stay here. I could be there for him and cheer him up. I see him tearing up a bit, deflecting in his seat, but I'm here, and I find the right words to pull him close. We move to the bed and he leans on me, like yesterday. I know everything will be fine. I repeat it to him, again and again, until he believes it, too. Oh, wow. It's a setback, but it's not the end of the world. He asked me to stay the night again, but this time, as I hold him, our snouts meet. But it's a fantasy. Here before my eyes, reality unfolds. Okay, let's see. Rune takes a sip of the tea before opening the browser, reminding me about mine, too. Holding it up to my snout, I take a small lick just to taste the tea. It's... I don't have words for it. The taste is so... so intense that I feel it burning through my tongue. It doesn't taste of anything I can name, though. It's not bitter, not sweet, more like... like ramen? Yeah, I think that's it. You're right, this is radical. I hope you like it. Ooh, look, there's the email.
Indeed, the most recent one in the inbox email is from the same unit. Some is blah. Indeed, the most recent one in the inbox email is from some university body and bears the title Japan Student Exchange Program. The stag takes another sip before clicking, all stiff from the excitement, almost trembling in his chair. My palms are sweaty from anticipation too. Different scenarios flash through my head, but I can't find much comfort in any of them. The email opens, filling the screen. The letters are small, smaller than on any than any on any than on my machine, and I can't see well from this angle. Thankfully, Rune starts reading the message out loud to himself. Dear student of University Anslow, that's me. Thank you for applying to our exchange program. We have reviewed the research papers that you supply with your application, and we were impressed with the quality of your work and your attention to detail, as well as with your general academic pursuits. This year, a record number of students applied to the program, and with the high caliber of applicants, the selection pro process was more strict. Unfortunately, we regret to inform you that your application was rejected. A mug in his paw, Rune stares at the screen blankly. His face betrays nothing, blank and still, like a mask. Should, should I be happy? It's what I wanted, isn't it? Why the sinking feeling in my stomach, though? As if I was a, as if, as if I was a brick thrown into the ocean, floating to the bottom slowly. I'm only sitting at a laptop, but it feels like I'm watching an avalanche in slow motion. Rune... Rune? He doesn't react. Finally, he blinks, and then again, twice, and sets the mug down on the desk, dangerously close to the computer. Garvin? I gulp. There's a weird edge in his voice that I've never heard before. A sort of violence hidden inside. Yes? Can you leave me alone for a while? Please? Uh, sure, just let me... I stand up with my mug, looking around but not really seeing anything. D did I leave any stuff here? No, it doesn't matter. I'll go, yeah. See you later? Supper, maybe? See ya. I leave the room, and as soon as I step over the sill, the door closes behind me. I turn around, looking at the large number six written on it. Is there anything I could do? I don't think so. No. Rune wanted to be alone. The best I can do is honor his wish. Only now I notice that I'm still holding the teacup. Knocking on the door right now would not be a good idea, though. My gods, Rune. Head full of worries, I turn away and start walking towards my room. Suddenly, from behind the wall, cacophony pierces the silence. Loud thud and string snapping reverberate, followed by an angry feral roar. I quick I quicken my steps, tea spilling from the cup. Ah oh, shit. Broke his damn guitar. Arctic frost bites at my face. Incredible that some of our ancestors arrived here and decided that, yes, this is a fantastic place to live. We should settle right here. Life here back then must have been rough as hell, without heating and saunas with barely any food for half the year. It is beautiful here, especially in winter, but it's a deadly kind of beauty. The wind and frost blow leaves off the trees, cover the ground with snow and ice, freeze the lakes, and sap the warmth from limbs. A verse from a traditional Icelandic song comes to mind. Beautiful are these fjords. When winter sets in, I don't know a worse place in the world. People and animals then die. Winter is the time of death and stillness, but maybe in spite of it, I feel more alive than ever. The landscape of my heart is full and brimming. With the thud of the door of the runes room and the terrible cacophony of a guitar being smashed resound in my head, bouncing off the inside of my skull. I hope the deer is okay. There's someone standing on the edge of the forest. I know that jacket and the dark hair, usually tidy, now blown into disarray and sprinkled with snow. My paws carry me forward, almost by themselves, pulled by curiosity. Miko? Carvin? There are so many emotions he arises in me, so much passed between us. Like a knot tied tightly, impossible to untangle, it sits on the thread of our friendship, weighing it down. Alright, I'm gonna pause it right there, y'all. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm going to give a quick shout-out to our lovely bronze tier patrons. Thank you all for all you do for the channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you our silver tier patron, Cade Silverman. Thank you for going a bit above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you to our gold tier patron, Trezum Guy. You're awesome. We love you. Thank you for subbing to Ultimate Tier. Anyway, if y'all want to get your names in the credits, get access to all of our Not Safe for Work contents as little as $5. Alrighty, I love you all, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye bye Hey, y'all, the, uh... The Sissel video, Not Safe for Work video, is going up tomorrow on the Discord server. If you want to watch, if you want to see the Not Safe for Work Sissel video, gotta be a patron, y'all. Five bucks gets you in. Anyway, bye-bye.